In this series of videos, we want to cover how Bosch cameras make using fiber optic connectivity simple, easy, as well as making connectivity to the head end equipment, whether it be a media converter or a fiber ready switch, uh, easy as well. Um, Tom, why don't you talk about why a customer might want to use fiber optic connectivity to connect one of these cameras to sure. the system? I, the advantages of fiber are very big, and we could probably do a video just on fiber usage. But you know, typically uh, with fiber, be it multi-mode or single mode, and we all know single mode can go greater distances and you know higher bandwidths. But the biggest advantages to fiber is longer distances than metallic cables, again, depending analog, IP, whatever devices. Which uh, is a big deal, oh. I think, when we talk about changing old analog systems that are still out there over yeah. to IP, we know right away there's a big difference because yep. back when we were using coax, we had that 750 to 1,000 foot distance, and then we go to IP, you know, that distance has become limited to a 300 feet. Absolutely, so with the fiber, you can go much greater distances, um, also, it's immune to any EMI, RFI interference. So where does that come into? Well, if you're putting you know, uh, cameras on a fence line or pole, where again, you're, you got high voltage cabling in there, you know, the fiber is gonna do much better because it's immune to that. But also, take lightning hits. And we all know, I don't care where you are, there's always lightning around depending on where you're putting these cameras. And typically they're high points. So where does the lightning go? High points. So will it stop the camera from getting blown? Maybe. But if the camera does get blown, there's no way for the induced voltage of the electricity or lightning to go down the cable at that point because it's not a metallic cable, it's glass. Glass is an insulator. So it could take the camera out. It could take even the media converter or fiber optic transmitter out or SFP, but there's no way for it to get back down into your head end, which could be your switch, your NVR, or your recording devices. Or all that stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> back to the device and then out to everything else as well. I exactly. So, you know, longer distances, higher throughput and bandwidth, uh, immune to RFI, EMI, uh, lightning strikes, all those advantages to fiber. But like we always say, for every pro, there's a con. You know, where's the con in fiber? And, and typically, the, the biggest con would be is we can't put power, you know, down across the fiber optic cable. I mean, there's <laughs> special cable that some of the cable manufacturers yeah. make that, in addition to the fiber mm -hmm. cable itself, um, there's also power wires that are going over. But those are specific cables, and they do have distance limitations. Um, but again, they are helpful, and they are an option to get power from a central location yep out to a remote location in addition to using that fiber cable. Yep, yep. So, so Steve, tell us what, what some of these devices are that are up on the table. Okay. Um, the first thing that we want to talk about is the, the traditional uh, Bosch Gen 5 series Autodome, mm -hmm. and it comes, it comes in a couple of different options. We're showing it here traditionally with the, with the wall arm. Uh, the second thing is, uh, the key here is that this is the new Universal Series mounting adapters, okay? And this is a common mounting system that allows pretty much any of the new fixed cameras and even some of the PTZ options mm -hmm. that we have to be able to be mounted on some common um, boxes and mounts mm -hmm. and, and things like that. Very, very helpful. In this case, we're showing this with an 8000i series camera, and we'll talk about how um, making easy connectivity to fiber optic is a part of that uh, mm -hmm. universal series mounting system. And then on that side of the table is the new um, Gen 6 Autodome PTZ camera, and that, that's a little different than, the, than both of these options. Mm -hmm. We'll cover that in a separate video by itself because it is, it is very different than the traditional, mm -hmm. either the Gen 5 or the, or the um, universal mounting kit type yep. connectivity. Now, one of the big questions that I know some people are gonna ask is, when do we use a fiber optic transmitter built into these devices versus a standalone media converter? And you know, a standalone media converter would be a separate box. Well, I think there's a couple different options and, and I don't think there's a right or a wrong way because I, I think that there's a lot of people that have a school of thought to do this 
differently um, for different reasons, okay? But you talked about um, lightning and surge and things like that. Um, uh, high voltage on, a, on, say, a light pole. When the power mm -hmm. comes on, that's going up to the top of the yep. pole to a light. Um, you really need the fiber optic converter, the media converter, as close to the camera as yep. possible to eliminate the problems. Same thing goes with the high voltage from lightning and things like that. The mm -hmm. closer you can get the media converter to the camera, the better off it is. Some people prefer to put the, the from the top of the pole to the bottom of the pole or at a location that's more convenient to get to, that's where they'll change from fiber to the copper connectivity and then run that, maybe a short jumper to the camera from that box. A lot more people I think I see for a lot of different reasons, the ones we've covered, maybe mm -hmm. even security, want the fiber optic media converter as close to, or in fact inside the camera, if at all possible. And that's why we're doing the video series to kind of talk about what options we have to be able to do that. And the one point even, and I know you deal a lot with federal government agencies and stuff like that, on the, and I'm going to open up the can of worms, on the cybersecurity, is there something that they look at with fiber and getting it as close to the camera as possible? I think fiber um, inherently is more secure than okay. a copper cable. I think over time and technology, there's been ways that have been um, made available that you could still kind of, we'll call it siphon the, the information off of a fiber. So I, I don't know that to a T, but yeah. I know that that's been talked about out there for a while, but it's certainly far more reliable and far more secure than using a piece of copper or some other sort of metallic connection back to the head end. So there is an inherent value in the security of the fiber itself. Okay, good. Now, now one of the things I know we touched on is, uh, you know, with fiber that we can't do is power across the fiber. So how typically are we powering these devices and if we can't, we don't have the metallic cable? Sure. I mean, PoE obviously is the thing that's going to not work here because, again, we don't have those extra conductors, those extra copper conductors coming across the Cat5 mm -hmm. or the Cat6 from the switch or from a, um, a PoE injector that's somewhere along the way or at the head end. So we lose that capability of doing PoE if you want one power source for the entire unit. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to forgo that. Now, all these offer several different options, and we'll cover the specifics of what each can do independently in the, in the videos that are going to follow this that are okay. specific to, to the options. But basically, if you're going to put fiber optic at the camera, in the camera, then you're going to need to have some source of external power whether it be AC or DC, that has to feed the cameras at the, at, the, or at the camera location. Okay. Now, I'm going to throw this out there, too, because, again, we do, and other manufacturers do, make cameras that maybe only can do PoE. So I guess at that point, we got to put the injector or mid-span at the camera? Well, I think... To, to speak in general, the answer to that would be yes, but obviously you have to have a place where you can break that fiber connection to a copper connection. And right. I think in some of these options, we'll be able to show you that, mm -hmm. but you gotta have a place to put that, right? Gotcha. It's got, and it's gotta be between the media converter and the, the actual camera itself. And, and as a matter of fact, we sell also, there's manufacturers out there that sell media converters that will supply power, PoE power, directly to the camera or whatever device is plugged into the Ethernet connection on the media converter. So even that's an option, but again, that requires that you have that media converter. And again, that media converter is going to have to have some sort of power right. other than PoE. It's going to have to have 24 volts or, or something, some DC voltage to power that, that, um, that media converter to be able to do that, generate that PoE to the camera. Now, last question I have, where can I find help? if I don't know what to use? Well, I think the important piece is you can always just call the office um, and you can contact us at support at midchest.com um, and, and we can help you out. Because again, we're, in the next couple of videos, we'll cover a lot of this, but what you're gonna find is there's lots of options. There's lots of this little in intricate pieces that you have to, have to have involved. And then there's all these little pieces and parts. We have some of this stuff on the table. You have SFPs and different types of fiber, and then you have the, the copper connectivity for doing all this and, and going from that direction.